Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some bearish news. First up, a shock survey suggests that most investors think Bitcoin won't top 50K by 2030. I want to take a look at what's going on here and try to debunk some of the things that these people are worried about also. Bitcoin U.S. Senate. Republican Senator says Bitcoin can act as a store of value. And the new senator from Wyoming really lays down a fantastic reason as to what Bitcoin can do, and she really understands it. And a quick little snippet about Bitcoin maybe hitting a wall of profit takers around 19.5. So we'll get to what's going on in the market, but first we have to do the 12 days of Christmas. So the 14th is behind us. We've already drawn four winners for the stone book. Congratulations to everybody. I think they've all contacted me so far. So we will get your stone books out ASAP. Now today is the 15th and we're going to do a nice little drawing of our second Ledger Nano X. We've already done the drawing or done the video for today for the first Ledger Nano. And let's just take a look at what it was. So this one was actually pretty funny. So we did a quick video about uh, PayPal and I talked about it as like the most bullish video I've ever done on Bitcoin. It really was. It was amazing about what's going on, not just with PayPal, but what's going on with the stock prices and how I believe that institutions and really corporations are going to start to FOMO in. So in that video, I had people do two things. First, I had them just to comment on uh, just to say ledger and the second thing I want to do was just to say one kind of phrase that I usually use on this channel <laughs> I have to, I, gotta, I gotta tell you I gotta tell you uh, that's one of them uh, that it was pretty funny actually to take a look at all the different comments and I'm just gonna today when we did the uh, nano ledger I mean the uh, stone book I went all the way down to the very uh, bottom so today I'm gonna go to the very top so let's just flip down uh, Courtney Smith, congratulations, you are the winner. So she put Ledger and then watch out, XRP peg the quarter. One, that's pretty funny. One of my favorite jokes, now I can't say it because uh, XRP is at like 49 cents, which sucks. But uh, yeah, that was it. And I have to tell you, <laughs> I gotta stop saying it. But it is funny when I just take a look at all the things that I say all the time, Tether, who cares? It's just a Tuesday in crypto land. Uh, Tether's Tether, <laughs> I want a Ledger. It rhymes pretty good. Potato coin, potato foot, oh, that's classic, potato foot coin, very penny. So uh, today, the same thing. Uh, what I'm gonna have you do is just comment ledger and just call out one of the uh, usual phrases that I say, and then I will do the drawing tomorrow uh, for tomorrow's video. So again, uh, to Courtney Smith, congratulations. If you would be so kind, just reach out to me either on Twitter, if you follow me, at News Asset, or just go to danteacherscrypto.com, click on the contact button, and then send me your email and we'll verify it and we'll send you out your Nano Ledger X. So again, I want to say thank you to uh, Nano Ledger for supporting this uh, giveaway. If you are still looking for a ledger, take a look in the description of this video if you don't win today and uh, go ahead and pick one up uh, for 20% off. So all right, let's go on the market. So today it is December 15th and we've got, uh, what is it, Ryan, 12, 12 p.m.? High noon, El Paso, Texas time. So Bitcoin 19.5. And we're going to go over this specific article that says that there is a sell wall uh, at 19.5. So we'll see if it can uh, bust through that. I don't know. But it's up almost 2%. That's great. Ethereum at 590. I like to see that. XRP, watch out, 47 cents. And after that spark snapshot, it did uh, take a little bit of a tumble. And we'll see if it can rebound up to whatever people think is going to go you know a dollar five hundred dollars i don't know tethers tether nobody cares uh, bitcoin cash wow hey bitcoin wow bitcoin cash is up nine percent holy smokes i didn't i never look at the prices before i do the video i just pull up coin gecko so it's always surprised when i say like i'm surprised like i am surprised i it always shocks me when i'm like look at the prices 6.4 for the polka dot and that's pretty good 3.2 for bitcoin s i no, I, I don't know why it's in the top 20. Someone explain it to me. 2.4 for NEM. NEM's always up there. And then OKB 3.5. So I'm going to do the top 20. If your coin is in the top 20, well, maybe you should work harder to get there so I can cover it. All right. So that's uh, the price in uh, dollars. Let's see how it would do if you would have done this in uh, Bitcoin. So we like to take a look at this because we want to see if the alts are competing with Bitcoin. So if you would have invested just in Bitcoin, you'd have been okay. Ethereum would have down by 0.6, not a big deal. XRP, four and a half down, Tether, that's nah, whatever. Bitcoin Cash, you would have been up big. And this is one of those things, you know, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash. Well, if you would invest in Bitcoin Cash, you'd have been up uh, pretty tremendously. Uh, another one, 4.6 for Polkadot, 1.5 for Bitcoin SV, eh. 0.8 for NEM, 1.8, and then down you go, 1.4, 3.0, whatever. 
All right, so really it just comes out of this. Um, Bitcoin's not the end all be all. And we're gonna talk about my portfolio, why I've invested in certain things. And uh, I do think Bitcoin's gonna do very well, but uh, as always, diversify. All right, let's jump into today's top stories. First up, this was uh, kind of concerning. I took a look at this and uh, it was a survey and people that were questioned were like, yeah, Bitcoin's maybe 50K by 2030. And actually more people thought, well, not more people, but a lot of people thought that Bitcoin's going to go to 1,000 in 2030, which I thought was crazy. But uh, let's let's take a look. So this was a survey done by Genesis Mining, and this was uh, it was a thousand current and former U.S. based Bitcoin investors. So they all been in the U.S. and they all had uh, invested in Bitcoin. But remember, it is a thousand people, but that's a that, that's a pretty good sample size. It kind of gives you the the the, the lay of the land about what people would actually think. Anyhow, two thirds believe Bitcoin is a better long term store of value than the dollar. So when we first started talking about this. You really have to, you know, take a look at where's people's uh, thought processes as far as Bitcoin. Do they think it's like just a crazy, you know, uh, ridiculous type of investment? I don't think they would because they're, you know, being surveyed by Genesis Mining. And then where do they think it's actually going to go? Uh, half of respondents believe Bitcoin will beat out gold, real estate, and the stock market over five to ten years. So these are people who, you know, a lot of them think it's going to do pretty well. But here's what they said. Only 17% of those surveys predicted Bitcoin's price would exceed 50,000 by 2030. I'm here to tell you, I think Bitcoin's price will exceed 50,000 by 2021. And my prediction, it's very conservative, I think it's around 150,000, between 100 and 150,000. I know some people will say, it's gonna be 300, it's gonna be 500,000. Sure, whatever. I mean, if it is, I'll, I'll be I'll be glad to be wrong, trust me. Uh, but that's where I, where I say it. But these people are like, no, no, uh, 50 grand by 2030. The question is why? Why do they think that? So in total, 50.1% of respondents estimate that Bitcoin will be worth 20,000 or less by 2030. And then one third predict the price will be 10,000 or less and almost 12% <laughs> think it's gonna be below 1,000. Okay, see, that's just it. That's This is what makes the whole world go round. Differences of opinions. And you can see that <laughs> in the comment section of every one of my videos. There are a lot of people who have a lot of different, uh, you know, thought process as far as what can, is going to happen in, in the cryptocurrency digital asset world. And uh, I welcome all those opinions because that's kind of where we kind of find that sweet spot of where people believe it's actually going to be. So the real question again comes down to why. Why do they think that? What are they scared about? And I can understand it because what they expect is Bitcoin to be hindered by regulations? That's the first thing. And then a lot of them are one fifth uh, anticipated outright bans on crypto from government. So I wanna break these two down first, then we'll go to the other ones. But when you talk about hindered by regulations, yes, they see Bitcoin can't be hindered by regulations. Exchanges can be hindered by regulations. But Bitcoin itself, again, you have to shut down the whole internet because there's over 10,000 nodes uh, of computers across the world. So good luck shutting that down or regulating that or re you know regulating the internet per se. That's not gonna happen. But exchanges, yes, they could. And like I've always talked about, you can have one country, let's take America, they say, you know what, exchanges? No more cryptocurrency, which would be crazy. I mean, come on. But like, let's just say they do. No more cryptocurrency, we, we, we can't have that. I mean, look, US, back in the 30s, banned gold. They pretty much collected all the gold, and that's uh, exactly what happened. It's a historical fact, and these are one of the things that uh, I think is like a dark spot of America. So when they have something like that, could it happen? Sure. Will it happen? Probably not, but I mean, who knows? But if they do that, other countries are going to say to themselves, well, great. Well, we know where this is all going, so we are happy that you did that because we'll allow you over here. And then, of course, you can do a VPN and you can transact over there and do whatever you want to. So if America does that, I first of all, I think they will because that'd be stupid. And then they would fall way, way behind in the, in the digital asset race. And then, of course, the other countries can go, well, we're going to use Bitcoin and we're going to sidestep uh, all your sanctions because... <laughs> We're not going to use the U.S. dollar as a world reserve currency. And I know China and Russia are just, you know, chomping at the bit to not have that happen. So that would be a bad idea. I mean, I guess it kind of fits in, in, in both of those, hindered by regulations and bans on crypto. So I guess if I really took a step back and talked about hindered by regulations, I mean, look, you have New York State, which has some of the highest regulations uh, that we have in, in the United States, and people are still able to get Bitcoin. They can't get a lot of other things like Cardano. Believe me, I, I see it. I, I think it's gonna be more down to the case of the altcoins 
having the issue as opposed to Bitcoin. That's how I see it. And the next part is 70% of non-bullish respondents expected another crypto or a central bank issued digital currency will capture a dominant market share and supersede Bitcoin. And I would have said yes to this. I would have said yes to this if America had picked up the pace and years ago in 2017 started to go, you know what, we're going to do a CBDC and we're going to roll this out as fast as possible because we see where things are going. But they didn't. And they lost momentum. And now people are going to get used to something. They're going to use to be being able to use PayPal. They're going to be able to be used to use other banks and maybe some of their stable coins. But I think really PayPal is going to be the big one because they're going to be able to purchase different assets, also going to be able to purchase different things on the manufacturers or on the different websites, all the merchants, which is 28 million plus around the whole PayPal ecosystem. So if that happens, which it will in Q1 2021, people are going to use that and they're like, why would we go back to using uh, fiat and a digital dollar? Uh, because this stuff works just great. Oh, and guess what else it works great for? Uh, it actually appreciates. So uh, I know with the dollar, you guys keep printing that and the actual purchasing power goes down. I think I'm going to stick with uh, what I got right now. The flip side of that is I think there's a problem with when people use PayPal too much and they get used to the paper Bitcoin. That's why they need to understand the whole ramifications of using Bitcoin and where the actual power lies. The power doesn't lie in the centralization. The power lies in the decentralization of this cryptocurrency. And hopefully they figure it out. I got a great uh, website, Dan Digital Crypto. They can learn all about it, but uh, hey, I can only do so much. And the next one, just talk about how the hype will die down and it'll, and there's not like a real practical use case for Bitcoin. So I'll, st I'll talk to the, the practical use for Bitcoin. Um, there is no practical use. It's a store of value and that's about it. It's just like gold. And people say, oh, well, we can put that in jewelry and so on and so forth. Sure, but that's not what people buy gold for. People buy gold for as a store of value and they, they just hoard it and they sometimes they trade it, but mostly they just hang on to it because they don't want to have some kind of like catast catastrophic event. And that's fine. And that's, what, that's where the value comes from because they take it, they hoard it, they don't sell it, and the price goes up. Great. Same thing's going to be with Bitcoin. They're going to hold it as a store of value. People aren't going to spend it that much. That's just the way it is. That's why I think PayPal did what they did. Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, and Ethereum, because they know that people aren't going to pay, aren't going to pay uh, for Bitcoin so much. And then as far as the, the hype cycles, we talked about this yesterday. This is on my Twitter account. I think I pinned it to the very top, so you can find it pretty simple. But as far as hype cycles, it really goes comes down to four things. Having, all-time high, dip, reset, or space. So 2012, having, all-time high, dip, spacer. 2016, having, all-time high, dip, space. 2020, having, all-time high, dip in 2022 and then spacer 2023 so it's the same thing that's been going on but it's only been getting more and more and more i mean if we take a look at bitcoin the price just goes up i mean the all-time high in uh, 2013 it was about a thousand all-time high in 2017 was about twenty thousand. that's about 20x so in 2020 i mean who knows again i always think it's going to be a 10x so maybe 100 grand maybe 200 grand but I think it's around 150,000. So as far as hype cycles, I don't see that actually happening. So let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece. Next up, this was fascinating because when we just talked about regulation and the government stepping in, this is why I'm excited about this lady. She came in as a course, it is a Wyoming Senator. Everything great happens in Wyoming as far as cryptocurrency. So Cynthia Loomis, the incoming Republican Senator, appeared on the popular Bitcoin podcast called What Bitcoin Did. I like that podcast. I don't listen to it that much, kind of long space, but uh, it's got some great information. And really what it does is it peer, lets us peer into the mind of people who are in Bitcoin, especially this uh, Senator, Miss Loomis. And it was pretty great because she talks about that she's a libertarian, which is, that's the, the original, the, those, that's the OGs of Bitcoin. Uh, OGs, original gangsters, if for people who are outside the United States. And uh, they're the ones that like, you know, libertarian anarchists, those are the ones like, we like Bitcoin. Now it went to retail, and now it's coming into institutions, which I think will uh, bring us way up. But she believes that Bitcoin would turn out to be a backstop for nations when everything crashes. What is she talking about? Well, she says here, if we reach the point where we have ourselves uh, so much that things start crashing down, the black swan event occurs, there is a backstop available to every government, and that's Bitcoin. And it makes sense, right? Because if you're going to have a bunch of quantitative easing with central banks, they're just going to keep printing and printing and printing. And then the dollar 
or the euro or, the, or whatever they're printing, the purchasing power goes down and down and down and down. With Bitcoin, that doesn't happen. You got 21 million and you're stuck at that. That's it. And actually, you don't have 21 million because you're gonna have 21 million another, I mean, it's gonna take a long time to get all the way out to 21 million. Plus, we've already lost between two and six million because people have thrown away their hard drives back in the early days. So uh, it is it is a great thing. And it's not just you have one Bitcoin. Remember, it can be a hundred million Satoshis for one Bitcoin. So if you're not familiar with it, uh, think of it like pennies to a dollar. You got a hundred pennies to a dollar. There's a hundred million Satoshis to one Bitcoin. So there's a lot to go around. Uh, and I, I think as time goes on, when someone says I own one Bitcoin, they're like, wow, that's crazy. What are you like a trillionaire? That's just, that could be, who knows? Anyhow, she believes that Bitcoin can work along, alongside fiat currency and act as a store of value, which I think is pretty interesting. So you're going to have both of those. So the dollar is kind of like the every the everyday transaction, buy your cup of coffee, and then Bitcoin's going to be the store of value. Sure, I can see that. Why not? And this is why I know she knows what she's talking about. Loomis was among the first selected few politicians to oppose the recently introduced Stable Act. Posed by Congress Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, she made it clear that the current provision in the act made it a regulatory capture against the free market. And she states, I'm not in favor. This certainly won't help the unbanked. I believe in competition, not picking winners and losers. We did a video about this before. I thought it was a great opportunity for Brian Brooks of the OCC to sit those people down and just say, hey, look, you guys, this is what really is going on. Let me educate you on crypto and digital assets. And, uh, you know, hopefully that can still happen. But that's why I like Miss Loomis here. Looks like she knows exactly what she's talking about. And the reason I know that is because she says stuff like this. In the case of U.S. currency, inflation is baked into the Federal Reserve's plan for the U.S. dollar. So it's no wonder that our buying power is eroded. And she's right. I think you've probably seen this on my channel a couple of times. But this is the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar from 1913 to 2013. So this is when the Federal Reserve was created, up here. And then look what happened. <laughs> went all the way down. Then 1933, executive order, makes it illegal to hold gold coin, which we were just talking about, where they took all the gold back. Then Bretton Woods said, hey, let's make the dollar the US, or the US dollar, the reserve currency of the world. And that happened. And then it just kept going down because the Federal Reserve kept screwing around. And then of course now, and this is in 2013, it's worth about a nickel as opposed to a dollar. And uh, I can tell you right now, it's a lot, lot less than that. So I believe that uh, Miss Loomis here knows exactly uh, what she is talking about. So to finish up, Senator Loomis promised that she would spend most of her time educating her colleagues on why Bitcoin is a future and why the government needs to work towards an inclusive regulatory policy. We need more people like this. So I would just like to ask you for one thing. If you could go over to Twitter uh, on my, you can either you can either follow me or follow Miss Loomis, but I have her link. Uh, as far as like her profile and just give her a follow because I think she's one of the great ones uh, that could really do a lot of good for our space. All right, let's move on to our next piece. Last up, this is very quick. Um, Bitcoin could hit a wall of profit takers around 19.5. There's a lot of analysis and a lot of charts and things like that and it just makes me fall asleep. So I'm not gonna cover it. And just gonna say that this, they think it's gonna hit around 19.5 and we're gonna keep hitting 19.5 and go down. Hit 19.5 and go down. That's the whole article, okay? So actually I did a real, a real quick search for buy, sell orders, Bitcoin. And this is what I found, which was pretty impressive. Uh, these are the ads that come up. PayPal, Robinhood, eToro, eh, CoinZoom, and uh, well, the Bitflyer is not it, but they're all ads. So if you've ever worked with Google AdWords, it's super expensive, uh, especially in the finance market. You could be paying per click uh, up to 100 bucks per click, per click on Google AdWords. So when I see big companies like PayPal, Robinhood, and e well, eToro is always doing it, I know things are changing because they're dumping a lot of money into it and they want those people in like crazy. Just like when cell phones came about, you didn't see ads for cell phones that much. Well, now it's not about the cell phones. It's about the carriers. It's about Verizon versus AT&T versus Cricket or whatever else is out there. And they all want you to come in there and use their platform. And it's the same thing right now with crypto and digital assets. That's why PayPal, Robinhood, and all the big players are going to get in right now. And they're going to buy up a ton of ad space. And I would not be surprised if you see an ad for crypto in the Super Bowl. All right, so let's see if that 12.5 prediction holds true. Uh, remember today, where were, where were we at? It was about 12.501, I think it was, somewhere around there. Yeah, well, now it's 12.513, so let's see if they're right. And uh, that is it for today. So remember, don't forget to comment below. 
ledger and then put in some kind of uh, com or phrase that I usually say and uh, I'll draw it for tomorrow's video. So thanks for watching all the way to the end. I, I appreciate it. I know this one a little bit long. I apologize. A lot of great information out there. A lot of good bullish stuff. And uh, that's it. So thanks for watching. If you like these types of videos, there's going to be two more that's going to pop up on your left and right. Not sure because YouTube has all the magic and I'll let them do their thing. But uh, that is it. So thanks again and I'll see you on the next one.